Alright then gang, so the next thing I'd like to do is create a little tab system for two links at the top of our page. Now one link is going to be to show the current polls and the other link is going to be to show a form to add a new poll. So we're creating this tab system so that when we click on the show polls tab, it's going to show the poll list component. And when we click on the create new poll tab, it's going to show the create new poll form component. So we're just going to focus on creating this tab system in this tutorial. Now there's loads of different ways you could create this. There's not one way to create something. This is just one way. And the way I'm going to do it is by first of all over here declaring a couple of variables. So let me do a tabs comment first of all so we know what all this is. Then I'll create a variable called items and this items variable will be an array and in the array we're going to store what items or what text links we're going to have in the tab system. So we're going to have one tab that says current polls and that's going to be to see the list of polls and the other tab is going to be add new poll and we're going to click on that to create a new poll. So now we also need to say which one of these tabs is going to be active to begin with. So I'm going to say let and I'm going to call this one active item and set it equal to one of these things right here. Well, by default, I want to show the current polls on the screen. So I'm going to copy that and paste it here. And these two must be exact, not current polls with a lowercase p. They must be exact because we're going to check the difference between them later when we decide what content to show. And we'll see that. Okay, so we have these two items now. The next thing I'd like to do is create a tabs component so we can pass these in as props. So in the source folder, I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call this shared, not in capitals, shared. And in here, we're going to place any kind of components that could be reusable in different parts of the application. Now we could use a tab system elsewhere because we're not hard coding the tabs inside the tabs component that can be set from outside. So it becomes reusable and we can just pass whatever tabs in that we want. So we're going to place it in this shared folder. Let's create a new file called tabs dot svelte. Oops, I've spelled that completely wrong. Let me rename that. So it's tabs dot svelte. Okay then. So inside here, let's first of all create a script tag and we'll come back to that in a second. Then we need some kind of HTML template. So we'll start that off with a div with a class of tabs and we'll come back to that in a second as well. And then finally, we need a style tag in case we style this up, which we will do. All right then. So our tabs are essentially going to be a list of items. In our case, just a list of two items, these things right here. So if I'm creating a list, then I typically use a UL. We don't have to, but I'm going to use a UL. And now what I need to do is cycle through the actual tabs that we're going to have and output a bit of HTML for each one, an actual tab. Now, in order to do that, I have to pass the tabs in as a prop, these things right here, the items. So let us first save this for now and come over to app.svelte and import the tabs component. So I'm going to duplicate that and change this to tabs, then this to the shared folder and this should be tabs as well. So we've imported that and we're gonna place the tabs probably inside the main thing right here. So let's do a tabs component like so and we're gonna pass in these things as props. So I could say right here that the items are equal to items. Now remember the shortcut because the variable name and the prop name is the same is just to delete the left side of it and we're still passing the items in as a prop. Now I'm also going to pass in the active item as well. So we'll say active item because I'm sure we'll use that inside the tabs component at some point. Okay, so we're passing that data in as props. Now inside the tabs component itself, we can accept those. So let me do that inside the script. I'm going to say export, which we need to do in front of any variables which we're accepting as props. And then let items. And then underneath that, we need to also accept the other variable, which was, I think, let me have a look, um, active item. Yep. Okay. So export let active item. Cool. So we have those two variables now and we can use them. Now inside the UL, I want to output an LI tag for each item. Remember items is an array, so we can cycle through these and output a bit of template for each one. So let us now do an each loop. We do that by using curly braces, hash each 
Then what we want to cycle through, items, and then I'll name each one item as we iterate through. So let's close that off by saying forward slash each at the end. And then inside, I want to output an li tag for each item. So let's do that. And then inside the li tag, I'm going to actually output the item itself, the text of it. So I can just use this variable. So let me first of all do a div because we're going to use this to apply a class later and then output an item inside it. All right. So now all we're doing is cycling through the items and outputting an li tag for each one. So if I save this now, we should see both of those are right here. Awesome. OK, then. So what do I want to do next? Well, first of all, I want to say whether this current item is active and we can use this active item to determine that to apply a conditional class. We've seen how to do that in the past. So to apply a conditional class, I can say class active. So I'm going to apply this class to this div if a certain condition is true. And that condition is going to be the item is triple equal to active item. So if we cycle through items and currently we're cycling through this one, we're going to say, OK, is current polls equal to active item, which is current polls. This would be true. Therefore, this is true. So we apply the class of active to this div and then we can style this a little bit differently to show the user that this is an active item. When it cycles through the second one, add new poll. Well, this is not equal to the active item current polls. Therefore, it doesn't apply this class of active. So this is purely just to style this differently. So a user knows which item is active and what content they're seeing on the page. So down here, let me just add the active class because we're going to style this a little bit differently now. First of all, I'll give this a different color. So that's going to be hash D nine one B four two. And that should be a ready color. Yep. This red color here. Now I'm also going to say the border hyphen bottom is going to be two pixels and it's going to be solid and it's going to be the same color. So let me copy that bad boy and paste it right here. And then finally, the padding hyphen bottom is going to be about eight pixels. OK, so if I save this now, we should see this styling on the active tab, which is current polls. OK, still looks pretty pants at the minute, but we will make this look better. In fact, we'll do that first of all. So let's style this div first of all. So tabs, oops, so tabs and then inside we'll say margin bottom is going to be about 40 pixels. That's just so that the content underneath is given some breathing room. Then we'll do the UL and this will display as flex. So this is going to automatically put the li tags left to right and take up the available room on the row of content. If you want to learn more about flex, I do have a whole series on Flexbox, but I don't want to dive too deeply into it now because we're talking about Svelte. Um, then I'm going to say justify content. This is a flex property and it's going to be to the center. And then I'm going to say the padding will be zero and then the list style type is going to be none. That's to take away the little circle icons that we get on li tags automatically. So let me check this out so far. All right, looking better. Now we just need to add a bit of breathing room between those two things and also maybe change the font size. So let me now style the li tags themselves. The margin is going to be zero top and bottom, 16 pixels left and right. Font size about 18 pixels. Just crank it up a little bit. The color is going to be kind of like a gray color by default. Obviously, the active one overrides that. And then we're going to say the cursor is pointer just so a user knows they can click on it. So let's save that and preview. OK, looks good. So this is the active item at the minute. But when we click on these, nothing currently happens. Now, when we click on add new poll, what I'd like to do is then emit a custom event from this component and send up the item as data that was clicked on to the app component. Then we can take that item and we can update the value of active item to be that item. Does that make sense? So let me first of all import the create dispatcher because we need that to dispatch a custom event. So I'm going to say import and it's create event dispatcher. We've seen all of this in the past when we talked about custom events. And that is from the Svelte library. All right, so 
Now we have that, we can go ahead and create a dispatch function. So I'm going to do that right underneath. I'm going to say const dispatch is equal to create event dispatcher like so. And now we can use this dispatch function right here to dispatch a custom event every time a user clicks on one of these li tags. So I'm going to say right here on click and set that equal to some kind of function. Now we could declare this up here, but instead I'm going to do it right down here. I'm going to do an inline function because we're going to use this dispatch function and invoke that. So we can't do that without an inline function to wrap it. Otherwise it will automatically invoke itself when the page first starts. So let me do that. And inside the function, I'm going to say dispatch and we want to dispatch an event called tab change, but you can call it what you want. And then the data we're sending with that custom event to the parent is going to be the item. So whatever item we're currently iterating. So when we click on this, we dispatch this custom event tab change and we can listen for that event inside the app component where we output the tabs. So I could say right now over here on, oops, on, and then the event was called tab change and set it equal to some kind of function handler. So I'm going to say event handler function. So I'm going to call this tab change, but you can call the function what you want. And then I'm going to create that function over here, const tab change. And this is going to take in the event object and it's going to be an arrow function like so. And all we want to do inside here is reset the active item equal to whatever item we send right here in the event. Remember, we can grab the data that we send by using the event object and the detail property on that event. So I could now say that active item is going to be equal to e.detail, like so. And e.detail is just the item we send along right here. Okay. So now we've done that. When active item changes, say we click on add new poll right here, we send add new poll as the item value. It emits the event, we we'll listen to it, we call this function and we set active item now to add new poll. So when this active item changes, what we're sending down here is obviously updated. And so therefore active item now is create new poll. And so therefore the active class will be given to the second li create new poll, right? Because then the item is equal to that. So let's save everything and just test this out. I'm going to go to add new poll and it switches. If I go to current polls, it switches, etc. So this tab system is now working and that's awesome. Now we want to show content dependent on what the current item is. And we're going to nest that eventually inside app.svelte, the root component. So how do we do that exactly? Well, we could check whatever the active item is down here in the main tag using an if statement. And then if it's current polls, we'd show the current polls component. If it's add new poll, we'd show the add new poll component. So let me just quickly demo this, but we'll make it better later on. I'm going to say hash if to do an if check. And I'm going to say if active item is triple equal to current polls. So this has to be exactly the same as whatever the active item might be. So this or this, right? And if that's true, then we're going to output a paragraph that says poll list component goes here, right? And now let me do an else statement. So colon else and then if, and if active item is triple equal to add new poll. So that's the other option right here. So if we click on that option, then active item becomes that. And if active item is equal to that, then we'll output something different. That is going to be a paragraph and it will say new poll form component goes here. Now eventually it will nest the poll list component here and the poll form component right here. But this is just to demo how these tabs are working for now. And finally, we need to close this off by saying forward slash if all right then, so let's try this out. So we can see poll list component goes here because this is the active item. If we change it, then we can see new poll form component goes here. So now we're switching between these two bits of content dependent on the active item. 
And the great thing about this is that this tabs thing right here is reusable. So if you wanted to use this elsewhere on your website, you could do now because we don't hard code anything in here, any tabs. All we do is we set up an items array and we pass that in as a prop right here along with the active item. So if we wanted different items going into tabs elsewhere, we'd set up different items like this, a different active item, and just reuse the tabs component, passing those things in. So now we have that working, what I'd like to do in the next video is start on this component right here, which is gonna be the form component to add a new poll.